just about ready to start. And here we go. Welcome. This is Miss B from the Brand New 100 Library, and this is 4 o'clock Fairy Tales, Fables, Myths, and Legends. Today we're going to be doing a myth, well, a mythological creature. We're talking today about the Cyclops. The Cyclops, according to Greek mythology, was one of the very first creatures on Earth when Mother Earth, Gaia, gave birth, she had these huge, ugly children named Cyclops that had only one eye right in the center of their head, foreheads. They were named Lightning, Thunder, and Thunderbolt. They were not handsome, but they were incredibly strong and great workers. They used heavy hammers that flashed across the sky lit up the heavens and even were brighter than their father's stars. This is one picture of what the Cyclops, Cyclops looked like. So, oh, thank you very much. Nice to see you guys. I think maybe Olive is watching today. Thanks for joining us. Well, in Greek mythology, the Cyclops is very scary, kind of unattractive. The book we're going to share makes it look just a little bit, a little bit more friendly. This is the One-Eyed People Eater, the story of the Cyclops by Joan Hulu. Chapter one, shipwrecked. There was once a Greek king named Odysseus. He was happy because he and his army were sailing home to Greece. They had been fighting in the Trojan War for 10 long years. They finally had won, and now they could go home to see their families. But on the trip home, it began to rain, and thunder and lightning flashed across the sky. Huge waves tossed the ships this way and that. They were soon shipwrecked on an island. Odysseus and his men were hungry after fighting the storm, but they had no food to eat. Just some wine. Odysseus picked it up. Let's go see who lives on this island. Maybe they will trade us for milk and cheese. He, told, he and 12 of his men went in search for food. Soon they found a cave and they went inside to look around. There was food everywhere. Dinner was cooking in a big pot. I wonder who owns all this said Odysseus. Let's just take some food and leave before the owner comes back, suggested his men. Oh no, said Odysseus. Let's wait and ask the owner. I'm sure he will be glad to share. But trapped. Stomp, stomp, stomp in walked a giant with one eye in the middle of his forehead. He was big. He was hairy. And he blocked the entrance to the cave. A herd of sheep followed him in, and then the giant pushed a heavy rock in front of the cave opening. They were trapped. The giant stared at the men with his one eye. I am Cyclops, he said in a grumpy voice. Who are you? What do you want? Now, Odysseus was scared, but he tried not to show it. We are hungry travelers. We were hoping to share your dinner, he replied. Ha <laughs> ha! I am always happy to have visitors for dinner, said Cyclops, and he scooped up two of Odysseus's men and oh, popped them right into his mouth. Crunch, crunch. Get it, he said. Visitors for dinner. Ha ha ha. The men did not laugh. They were angry and scared. Cyclops didn't care. He just went to sleep. Odysseus and his men could not move the rock at the front door. There was no escape. The plan. The next morning, the Cyclops woke up hungry. Where's my breakfast? He asked in his grumpy voice. He grabbed two more men. Oh, here it is. Crunch, and he gobbled them up. See you later, he told Odysseus. 
Cyclops moved the heavy rock from the cave's doorway. He took his sheep outside, then pushed the rock back in place. <sighs> and Odysseus and his men were still trapped. We're doomed, groaned Odysseus's men. He will eat the rest of us when he gets back. Don't worry, said Odysseus, I have a plan. He found a long stick in the cave, as big as a tree trunk. So he and his men cut one end of it with a knife, ch -ch 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 -ch, until it was pointed and sharp. Then the men hid the stick. When the Cyclops comes back, said Odysseus, we shall be ready. What do you think they might do with that stick? That night, the Cyclops, Cyclops returned, stomp, stomp, stomp. He grabbed two more men and gobbled them down. This made Odysseus very mad, but he hid his anger. <clears throat> Would you like a drink? He asked the Cyclops. Sure, said Cyclops, why not? So he took the cup of wine that Odysseus gave him and drank it all down. He drank more and more and more until it made him sleepy. Cyclops looked at Odysseus with his one good eye. Oh, what is your name? The Cyclops asked. Now Odysseus decided to trick him. My name is Nobody, he said. I will reward for giving me such a delicious drink, said the Cyclops. Your reward is... I will eat you last. <laughs> Thanks a lot, said Odysseus. But Cyclops didn't hear. He was snoring away. Now Odysseus and his men got the sharp stick from its hiding place. They leapt on top of the Cyclops' belly. He didn't wake up. One, two, three, push. And they shoved the stick right into the Cyclops' eye. Ah! The Cyclops roared. You poked out my eye. Cyclops swung his arms back and forth. Wait till I find you, then you'll be sorry. But he could not catch the men because he could not see them. Cyclops felt his way to the door. He pushed the heavy rock out of the way. Help me! He yelled. His neighbors came running. Look, his neighbors were Cyclops too. Giants! What's wrong? They asked. Nobody poked me with a stick, said Cyclops. Help me catch him. You want us to help you catch nobody? Asked the neighbors. That does not make any sense. And they all went back home. Remember, that's what Odysseus said his name was. Cyclops sat down and blocked the cave doorway. You'll never get away, he said. If you try to leave, I will grab you and gobble you up. Don't worry, Odysseus said to his men. I have a new plan, an escape plan. When the sun rose, Cyclops called his sheep. Time for you to go outside and eat some grass, he told them. And as each sheep passed, Cyclops felt its back. I will not let you men escape by riding my sheep outside, he said. Luckily, Cyclops did not think of feeling the sheep's tummies. Because that is where Odysseus's men were hiding. Odysseus tied the sheep together, and the men on, in, on, the, on the underside of the middle sheep. All six of his men were soon outside. But now Odysseus had a problem. There was no one left to tie him to the sheep, so he just had to grab on to the underside of the last sheep and hang on. Little did he know that this sheep was the Cyclops' favorite pet. As the last sheep passed by, Cyclops petted its back. Odysseus held his breath. Would Cyclops find him? Huh, you're usually the first one out, Cyclops said to his favorite sheep. I guess you're sad today because I am hurt. He gave the sheep a hug, but then it ran outside, taking Odysseus with it. Odysseus was free. Odysseus and his men returned to the ship and sailed away. They looked back at Cyclops. He was still sitting in his cave. We have escaped, Odysseus shouted at him, and we have taken some of your sheep. Maybe that will teach you to be nicer to visitors next time. Cyclops roared in anger. He picked up the giant rock and threw it. Splash! It just missed Odysseus's ship. The splash made a big wave that gave the ship the push off it needed. Thanks for the boost, yelled Odysseus, and him, he and his crew 
sailed toward home once again. As for Cyclops, he did not change his ways. To this day, he is still the same old grumpy self. So don't ever visit him around dinner time if you know what's good for you. The end. And that is a retelling of the myth of Cyclops. We still use that word Cyclops to talk about a creature or a monster or something that just has one eye. Humans usually have two. Well, if you were a little bit scared by the Cyclops, the, peop the people eater, I wanted to share with you a story that's a little bit more funny, a little bit, the Cyclops is a little friendlier. This is called the Cyclops of Central Park. Central Park is in New York City, New York, uh, and there are a lot of people around, not like on the deserted island. Let's see what this Cyclops is going to do. And this is by Madeline Rosenberg, illustrated by Victoria Tentler Krylov. And this is by G.P. Putnam Sons Random House Publishing that we are able to read this, so thank you. So here's the Cyclops of Central Park. <laughs> Can't find the first page. There it is. Late at night. Just before he closed his eyes and went to sleep in Central Park Cave, Cyclops counted his sheep. That is kind of like the scary version of the myth. When the sun rose, he, count them, he counted them again, and that's when he noticed. Sixteen, seventeen, one of them was missing. He knew which one it was, of course. Eugene? It was always Eugene. Cyclops looked behind the ficus tree and under the bed. He searched the meadow where the sheep often stood taking in the view, but the meadow was empty. Cyclops bit his nails. He had explained a thousand twenty-two times about the dangers that lurked nearby. The grass outside was too sharp. The carousel, the merry-go-round was too twirly. The new restaurant on Fifth Avenue did not serve spaghetti. There's no place like cave, Cyclops had said to Eugene. There's no place like the world. Eugene had told Cyclops. And now Eugene was out there in the wide world. Cyclops had to find him, and he had to make sure the rest of the sheep stayed safe. Stay near the cave, he warned his flock. Beware of the grass. Beware of everything. He hugged each sheep and then went off to find Eugene. He searched high above the city. He's on top of the building looking. He hit all the major hot spots. He even thought he spied the sheep at the Guggenheim, a museum. Eugene? Nope, that's just a painting. It's by Kooning. When Cyclops stepped too close to the art, the security guard suggested he view it from further away, and they escorted him out of the museum. Then he was trampled by tourists and conked on the head with a salami. Next, Cyclops made posters and stapled copies everywhere. But with all the lights and billboards, they were often overlooked. See, the poster is asking if anybody has seen his sheep, Eugene. He searched in the Yankees dugout, but he struck out there too. No Eugene. Eugene often urged Cyclops to take the flock to the Statue of Liberty. Too green, Cyclops had said, but this time he mustered his courage and his life jacket and boarded a ferry. He kept a sharp eye out all the way there looking for sharks, but there were no sharks. And no Eugene. The city was terrifying for Cyclops. He needed reinforcements, so he got all his sheep together and lined them up, gave them walkie-talkies. They had a pretty good idea where Eugene had gone. The subway was crowded, but the other riders politely gave up their seats so all the sheep could sit. They held on tight and got off at the appropriate station, Coney Island where a famous amusement park is in New York. Whoa. That's a pretty big roller coaster. Eugene! 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 And there he was, at the top of the cyclone, his hooves waving in the air. Too high, Cyclops shouted. Too scary, too wobbly, too fast. Yes, right! Shouted Eugene. When the ride was over, Eugene held out a long roll of tickets. Cyclops' hand was too shaky to take one. There's no place like cave, Eugene, said Cyclops. There's no place like the world, said Eugene. 
pretty, please, said the rest of the flock. <sighs> so Cyclops took a deep breath, closed his one eye. He tried his favorite yoga pose in breath. <sighs> he thought for a very long time. Then he took a giant gulp and got in line with the flock. They all, and then all 18 sheep and Cyclops rode the cyclone together. At first, Cyclops couldn't look. Then he peeked between his fingers and saw the whole world. Cyclops and the sheep rode the wonder wheel and the bumper cars. When they went wading in the foamy deep, the only shark they saw was the pretend one on the floaty around Cyclops' waist. Cyclops ate a record number of hot dogs and treated the sheep to some cotton candy. Finally, it was time to return home. They crossed the Gapsdale Bridge, and they stopped to watch the sunset over Manhattan. The city was not as terrifying as Cyclops had thought, as long as he was with his flock. There's no place like world, Cyclops said. Oh, there's no place like cave, yawned Eugene, and they both were exactly right. That night, just before he went to sleep, Cyclops counted his sheep. Sixteen, seventeen, eighteen. They were all there. And then he sat outside his cozy cave and counted all the things they were going to do next. The end. And that's the story of the Cyclops of Central Park. Definitely a made-up story. There are no giants living in Central Park. There are animals, but not the Cyclops' sheep. This version definitely is more friendly than this version about the Cyclops who like to eat people. But they are both based on the Greek myth of the Cyclops. I forgot to mention this book by Joan Haloub and illustrated by Danny Jones is published by Simon & Schuster. I wanted to make sure I showed you that. There are lots of ways that you could play pretending to be a Cyclops. You could cover one eye and see if things look different by covering one eye and looking out. You can also play a game with a little bag or a little pillowcase. Put things or ask your adult to put some things in the pillowcase and without looking, you can reach in, see if you can find a particular item. So I put in some things in here from the kitchen and I might ask somebody to find something you use to eat soup. I'll reach in and feel until I find a spoon. Put it back in. Then I could ask somebody else to put their hand in and try to find mm, something sticky that comes on a roll and you use it to close up packages or put some uh, paper together. So that's a game you could play. It's kind of like covering up your eyes, but instead of covering your eyes, using your hands to do the feeling, kind of like the Cyclops did when he was touching all the sheep. That's it today for Four O'Clock Fairy Tales Folk Tales, Myths and Legends. Again, my name is Miss Beam with the Brandywine Hundred Library. Please like and follow us on Facebook. It's great to have you join us today. I hope Olive and Hazel and all our friends are going to join us again. We have morning music tomorrow at 8.30 a.m., 4 o'clock fairy tales on Friday. Please join us and... We'll see you soon. Thanks. Goodbye.